Hello, how is everyone doing today? I'm actually a little surprised at how many people are here for the stream on my other channel, but I knew that some people might be here from Facebook, but there are quite a few people here on the YouTube channel. So welcome to everyone. I hope my audio is doing okay. I hope the video is doing okay. Samer's here from Turkey. What's going on? Adriana's here from Poland. Anya's here from Germany. Who else was here? There's some other people. I think Amina was here too from Canada. Cecilia's here from Argentina. And hello to everyone on Facebook as well. I can't see exactly who is saying what on Facebook. It will just say Facebook user. So if you do ask a question, it'll just be Facebook user. There is a link in the comments section on Facebook. If you would like to join us on YouTube, there are also some links on YouTube that I couldn't put on Facebook. So there are links to the quiz at the end. If you want to take it, no pressure. There's a link to the vocabulary list that we'll go over today together. There's also a link to the article that I will read to you today. If at any time you have a question, put it in the chat. I will definitely answer it. Probably if you have a question, this is what I tell my students in class all the time. Somebody else probably has the same question. So today's lesson is going to be about ferrets and cloning. And it's going to be like you are my student for the next half hour or 40 minutes. I want to say hey to anyone who's watching on replay as well. Um, the great thing about this is it's free. It's like you are one of my students. You don't have to pay for it. I'm an in English teacher here in the United States. I actually did this lesson with my students in the middle of the week. And they seem to like it. It is a little science heavy. So it can be a little bit harder, I think, with science words, but that's that's why I'm here. We'll do it together. And hopefully by the end of this lesson, you will know English just a little bit better. How about that? What is going on? I don't want to I don't want to mess up when I say your name. Is it is it Carl? Probably not. I'm sorry. Adriana, me? Yes, you. I don't know. Hey, I was also glad to see that Anya is dealing with allergies. I am too. Sometimes in the United States, we say misery loves company, misery loves company. And so I am dealing with, there. I am dealing with allergies and Anya is too. Makes me feel a little better, but I'm just kidding. I don't, I, I hope Anya is not dealing with the allergies too bad. There you go. See, I'm sorry. See, it just says Facebook user, but hello. Hello. So what I would like, Susanna, how are you? Welcome. So the first thing I do with my students when we are about to read a difficult article is go over all of the vocabulary. And like I said before, there is a link in the description box that if you want to look at these words after the lesson, feel free. They're not going anywhere. That link will be there for a long, long time. Yes. Hey, the new microphone. I would like to also, there are a lot of channel members here um, for the other channel, American English with this guy. And they, help, <clears throat> excuse me, they helped me buy this microphone. So thank you, um, Anya, Samra, Adriana, Amina. I'll probably forget somebody. I'm sorry, but thank you so much. Got to take a sip of water. Got to get the glasses on because we are going to go over what I thought were the 10 most difficult vocabulary words of this article. Ah, Arroni is here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I will eventually get rid of the headphones, 
but I just want to make sure that I'm speaking into the microphone carefully because if I get too far away, it gets, you know, just harder to hear. So I kind of have to be right up on the microphone. Here we go. 10 words. And like a rod is here. What's going on, man? Thanks for joining. And like I said, there are 10 words here. Luke from Poland, Dr. Luke, what's going on, man? So many familiar faces. I, I need to get on with the lesson, but I see so many people that I know. Thank you so much. I hope you get uh, a lot out of this lesson. Some science, some science we'll be talking about. So that first word right there is precisely, and it means exactly. So the, the message that I used with my students was we have approximately 500 students in my school. Approximately. That means I don't know the exact number. Precisely, I might say, well, we have 512 students in our school. That's, that's a precise number. That's exact. So if you are building a house, you want your numbers that you're taking for measurements, you want those to be precise. You want those to be exact. This past week or so, NASA launched a rover to Mars. And to get that rover on Mars, those calculations had to be pretty precise. They had to be exact. So you want to be precisely correct, precise. The next one is replica. And in a minute, we are going to talk about another word, which is identical. So replica is probably going to be a noun most of the time. And identical will probably be an adjective most of the time. But I want to talk about those two words together because let's talk about identical first. It means exactly the same. And you can see there are twins there. If there are two babies that are exactly alike, we call them twins. If there are three babies, does anybody know? If you know, you could put that right in the chat. This is not one of the words, but I'm curious. So most babies are born alone, right? Single. But sometimes the mom will give birth to two. We call them twins. And sometimes they are identical. Sometimes they look exactly alike. But every so often, not as common as twins, there are these things. What do we say in English? When, oh, Facebook user. I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know your name. It just tells me Facebook user, but that's it. Triplets. So if there are three babies coming out of the womb, which is one of our words in a minute, we call them triplets. Oh, look at this. So many smart people in here. So many smart people. Nice job, Aroni, Adriana. Yeah, triplets. So identical means the exact same. So a lot of times when twins come out, they are the exact same. They are identical. Now, I have a brother. He is about five years younger than I am. A lot of times people will think we are twins because we look so much alike. We look almost identical. Identical is a word that I would like to discuss with you. And it's almost like replica. So the difference between identical and replica, the replica isn't exactly the same for some reason. So if you look at that picture there, there are two police cars. The small one is a replica. It is built to look exactly the same. But if it's a replica... It might be smaller. It might be made from different material. Maybe that larger police car is like a real car and probably made out of metal. The small police car might be made out of plastic. So it's a replica. It's not exactly the same. And we wouldn't say those two cars are identical because one is smaller than the other. For them to be identical, they have to be the exact same. 
All right, just checking in the chat, making sure there are no questions. Hey, welcome, Mohammed. How are you? Welcome. Glad to see that you are watching on Facebook. I hope this lesson is helping. The next one is a great word to know, dwindling. It means becoming gradually less or getting smaller and smaller. Dr. Luke is in the chat. He loves summer, just like I do. And it makes me happy to know that the days we have before summer are dwindling. The days are getting smaller. The number of days before summer is getting smaller. We can say they're dwindling. Dwindling. I don't want to say the name of the virus, but you know what I'm talking about? 2020. It was a bit of a mess because of the virus. Luckily here in the United States, our cases are dwindling. Each day there are fewer and fewer cases. So we can say those cases are dwindling. Anytime you have something getting smaller over time, you can say that it's dwindling. Where I live, we have winter and we had a little bit of snow, not as much as we have had in the past. But looking outside, the snow is almost completely gone. It's been dwindling each day, getting smaller and smaller. How are we doing so far? Just checking the chat for questions. Just want to make sure that uh, if I say something and you don't understand it, hey, any good teacher hopefully will be looking for questions. I hope you can't hear what I hear but my son is running the trash compactor right now. Hope it's not too uh, distracting. The next one is diversity. Diversity. <laughs> I know there are some people in the chat that like the office. So early on in the office, they had something called diversity day. So if you know anything about that day, you'll know what diversity is. It just means a difference. And oftentimes we will talk about diversity when it comes to people. So maybe different genders. So a group of people, if it is diverse, that's the adjective form of diversity. If that group of people is diverse, they will have different genders. They'll have different races. They'll have different religions, diverse a lot of difference. In the article, we are going to talk about animals and their species being diverse. And with cloning, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves here, but with cloning, sometimes the animals can all have very similar genes, maybe identical genes. If it's a really small gene pool, that is not good for a species because if a virus comes around and there isn't something called genetic diversity, that virus could wipe out that species. All right. I'm sorry. For some reason, my comments have stopped. So I think it'll take me a little while, but if you have written a question recently, I probably won't see it. Hopefully I will soon. Yeah. All right. The next one is a tricky one. I'm going to pull it up full screen here. It's the one that starts with a W and it's so weird, but that B it's silent. So we pronounce that womb, womb, crazy womb. And you can see that is where a baby develops and the mom womb. And we're going to need that word to talk about the next word, which is surrogate womb. I, I don't want to get all into the, you know, to the talk. We call it the birds and the bees in English, but how babies are made. Let's, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, we're all adults here. We probably know, but when a baby is developing inside its mom, we say it's developing in the womb in English. 
The next one is surrogate. Surrogate. You will often hear this with surrogate mother. And my chat is just, whoa, whoa, whoa. It actually worked. Yeah, Adriana, exactly. Like comb. The um, the very rare silent B. Uh, but comb and A. Nathan is able to watch the live. So happy about that. Oh, it looks like Zobate is here. No, 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 no. You're not, you're not off. You're not, um, you're not late. And that's not off topic. We are, we are talking about mostly science today, but it will involve an animal called a ferret. Um, I do like, I do like animals. I know some people in here are really big fan of animals. I don't, maybe cats. Some people in here like cats. So welcome Zobeda. And yeah, exactly like comb. So surrogate, you will often hear this word with mom or surrogate mother. So if a couple is unable to have a baby completely by themselves, they might get the help of a surrogate mom. And what that surrogate mom will do is she will let the couple borrow her womb. She will be responsible for eating the right foods, going to the doctor's appointments to make sure that baby develops as well as possible. So I, I do actually know of at least two women who have offered to become surrogate moms for a couple who could not have a baby completely on their own. All right, Samra. There you go. Big fan of cats. Big fan of cats. Um, you know, I like, I like cats. Okay. Just, just okay. I was scratched by a cat when I was younger. So yeah. I, I'm sorry, Adrian, I know loves cats. So, um, I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> Anya, I'm not sure if you're allergic as well, but I'm allergic. Uh, I have seasonal allergies and then I also am allergic to cats and dogs. So Larissa's here. So as I was saying, I know um, of two women who have become surrogate mothers. And does anybody want to guess in the chat how much they were paid? Now, any woman who has had a baby, and I know there are several in here, having a baby does a lot of damage to your body. So they should be paid, right? They're, they're sacrificing their body nine months, lots of pain, doctor's appointments. They have to do the right thing. Oh, Alina also says, I'm a dog person. That's very common in English where you'll say, Oh, I'm a dog person. I'm a cat person. So if you like one of those animals over the other, just put that animal before person and that would describe you. So I'm a cat person. I'm a dog person. I'm a snake person. Anybody in here snake person? I am not. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually pretty frightened. Ah, this is a good question. Arroni. Getting back to the, uh, the replica. A lot. Okay. Look at that word mock-up. I'm glad you, you mentioned that Arroni. Hey, if anybody's learning Italian, you might want to check out Arroni's channel. It's very good. A mock-up is usually something that is not given to the public. It would be like the first replica. It would be in the early stages of developing a replica. So maybe it's not as sturdy as the replica will be, but a mock-up is just like um, maybe like something that's planned. So other people in the project can look at it before it goes out to uh, a wider audience. I hope that helps. That's a great word. Mock-up. Mock-up. Usually with um, when you're talking about business, if somebody is developing a product, they will do a mock-up version of it. So it's definitely going to be a little cheaper, not made as well. Nicely done. Nicely done. Oh, so Beta would like me to read a... Well, in a minute, I'm actually going to be reading an article. So that's almost like a book, but sometimes I have to be careful about what I read because there are copyright laws. So, but yeah, it's a great idea. 
Yeah, bar oh, Adoroni. Look at this. Yeah, exactly. So a new car that's coming out or a new phone. They might do a mock-up version of it first so they can work out the uh, the kinks. Here's a term. So they can work out the kinks. Kinks would be any problems that might happen when you're developing a new product. So they might do a mock-up version just in case there are any kinks. Right back to the words here. What's the next one? Oh, controversial. Controversial. That might be our last word. No, we got a couple more. Okay. The last three right there. Controversial. Okay. This is probably a pretty common one, but I think any time, ooh, even if you're discussing dogs and cats, that can be controversial. Anything that is controversial, it could create an argument or disagreement. And the two most common things that are controversial, it's got to be religion. It's got to be politics, right? It's very difficult for a diverse group of people to use another one of our words. It's very difficult for a diverse group of people to discuss politics and discuss religion because it will often create some arguments. All right. The next one is deformity, deformity. And in the article, they're going to talk about animals who are cloned, possibly developing deformities. So let's break down this word deformity. If, oh, thank you. So glad to hear that the, uh, or that the uh, microphone is working. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Bugs or kinks. Those are synonyms. If something isn't quite working, we might say we have to work out the kinks. We have to work out the bugs. A lot of times with electronics, if you're developing a new phone, there'll be kinks. Whoa. I'm not sure, but in Poland, to be a surrogate mother, mother is forbidden by law. That doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me um, for reasons that I won't go into, but I, yeah, I think it, Luke would definitely know better than I would, but I bet you're right. Uh oh, is this going to be controversial? Yeah, with with Luke's comment, I don't want to get too controversial and and bring up religion, but I like domestic animals, but wild animals, eh, just okay, huh? Oh, not to get too far off topic, but I showed my students. We learned today about uh, what's going on in Australia. They've had a lot of flooding and there were these spiders that came out of the ground and covered this man's fence. It's frightening. Absolutely frightening. Uh, so let's break down deformity. So if something is formed, if something is formed, it's, you know, put together well. When you put D in front of a word, it often means the opposite. So deformities, the example I used with my students was like a third eye. I, I don't even know if that is possible, but a third eye might be considered a deformity because that's not normal. Now, be careful in English. When you say the word normal, sometimes that's hard to define. It's hard to say exactly what is normal. So, but a deformity, it might be that person's finger, you know, maybe, but a deformity, it might have a negative connotation too. A deformity would imply that something was wrong with it. So when you're using deformity, be careful, six fingers on one hand. That, that's right. Some people might consider that a deformity. Some people might consider that a bonus. Like, oh, nice job. So just be careful with deformity because um, that could hurt somebody's feelings. If you're saying like their sixth finger is a deformity, it's a great example. But that's just one of the words that is used in the article. I just wanted to be sure that you know people don't don't offend somebody by calling, you know, um, something they have extra, or if they lack a deformity.
And the last one, unique, unique. Anytime you see uni in English, think one. So unique. We often say in English, every snowflake is unique. There are no two alike. There are no two that are identical. Every time you see uni, think one. So uniform, we'll go back to the, the form part as I hit my microphone. We'll go back to the, the form part. If everyone is wearing a uniform, they all look the same. So take McDonald's. I'm sorry, Dr. Luke. I know he doesn't eat fast food. I do sometimes. But everyone who works at McDonald's wears the same type of clothing, a uniform. Luckily, I don't have one, but we also have in English something called a unibrow. So most people have two eyebrows, right? But if they only have one eyebrow in the middle of their head, they say unibrow. I don't even know if a spell check thing, but a unibrow. Oh, someone's going to get some brownie points. My wife is unique for me. I love it. Um, yeah, one of a kind. Your wife, unique. Hopefully she's watching right now. Brownie points. That's what we say when someone is earning good favor with someone. So some of my students, maybe during normal times, it's typical, not anymore, but for some students to bring their teacher an apple, that's a very cliche thing in the United States. They would earn brownie points with that teacher. The teacher might think, oh, I like that person a little bit better. Maybe they, I will give them some special treatment. Um, it's a great question, Eduardo. Um, no, in English, we wouldn't say unique and genuine are synonyms. Uh, genuine, often a synonym for that is real. So um, I would stick with unique as, as one of a kind. Unique. Svetki? Svetki, I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, yeah, so his wife. Nobody else like his wife. Oh, I don't, I don't know this person. Are they going to be mad at us? Frida, Frida has a unibrow. I don't, maybe, I don't know. Maybe some people like the unibrow. Not sure. Oh, wait, what? Brownies made of weed. This is a family channel. What? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, some people in the United States, uh, maybe other places, there there are brownies made from weed. I've heard them called um, pot brownies, but no, not always. I've in fact I've never had a brownie made of weed, but I think it's possible. I don't know much about that. Um, I can try, Cecilia. I can try. Can you repeat the word animals? Sure animals. Thank you. Thank you. So if there are no questions about any of the words that we've covered, we can go ahead and start reading the article. Yeah, some great questions. I think some fairly difficult words, if you're learning English, just need to pull it up here. I got this. I promise I can do it. So this article actually comes from Canada. Yeah, the CBC, I believe it stands for Canadian Broadcasting Company. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, you're welcome, Cecilia. You're welcome. I will have to uh, look her up, look him up. But this is uh, an article from Canada. And you can see right there the picture. I'll bring this up a little bit is a picture of a ferret. 
Um, I've never owned a ferret as a pet. I don't think I would like to own a ferret as a pet, but I have had some friends who have owned ferrets as pets. So this is the title of the article. And to be honest, um, as an English teacher, I would really like to see most of those words capitalized. When you're capitalizing titles in English, you will often not capitalize the smaller words like a or the, but this should be capitalized. Ferret should be capitalized. Twin lived more than actually most of those should be capitalized is no, but the other ones probably should be capitalized, but I'm not going to hate on them too much. So this ferret's twin lived more than 30 years ago. How is that possible? So let's dive into this article and figure out how it is possible using some of those words that we just learned. Elizabeth Ann. That's the name of the ferret. Elizabeth Ann cloned to help her species. A ferret that died more than 30 years ago is getting a second chance at life. Well, sort of. More precisely, an exact replica of that ferret has been brought to life. And already you can see quite a few of the words we just studied being used more precisely. So becoming a little bit more exact, but they didn't want to use exact again whoops, because they used exact right there. So more precisely, an exact replica of that ferret has been brought to life. American scientists have cloned an endangered species native to the U.S. called the black-footed ferret. The clone, named Elizabeth Ann, was made to help the dwindling ferret species survive by increasing something called genetic diversity. But before we get to that, what the heck's a clone and how are they made? Clones are two living things that have the exact same genes, just like identical twins. Clones of animals are made in a lab by taking the cells of an adult animal living or dead and altering them, altering them. That means to change them just a little bit and altering them to change them into the building block type of cells seen in the womb. All right. How's that going? Like going too fast, too slow. Oh, I want us here. Welcome. Ah, uh, so in the United States, there are some people who like ferrets and Cecilia is saying some people in Buenos Aires probably pronounce that wrong, but that's how we say it in, in the United States. They have ferrets as pets. Yeah. I think they, some people, they have personalities and, ah, great question. So beta, a clone, it basically is a little scientific, but where you take, we call them genes in English. Oh, oh, so Aroni mentioned that, but you'll take the genes. It's basically like the smallest. We'll often call it like the building blocks of life. So the smallest part of what makes you, you, your genes, you know, you inherit them from your mother and your father and you take a gene. I don't know exactly how it's done and they create an exact replica of you. Now, if we want to get controversial and I actually don't, um, talk about human cloning. So in the United States, that is illegal. But in my class, we talked about something called designer babies. And this is why cloning can be controversial. Some people are in favor of it. Some people are not. If you start getting designer babies in English, that describes parents who in the future could say, oh, my grandfather had blue eyes. I want my baby to have blue eyes. And I don't know if the technology is there yet, but where does it stop? Um, 
Yeah. I mean, it gets really controversial. So some things that some people consider deformities, babies being born um, with less intelligence, maybe with less intel, not as smart as other babies. Can you have a baby cloned so that it would be naturally smarter? And this is where it gets controversial. So cloning there in the United States, not everyone agrees that cloning is a good idea. And I'm sure that's the case uh, around the world too. I hope that answered it. Yeah, see, yeah. So to some people, um, it's not ethical. Great word right there. And I think for more people, the more you start playing with what naturally happens, the more people are going to say, I don't know about that. So in the future, will it be only the rich that will be able to have the exact baby they want because they can pay for it? I'm sure there is some kind of science fiction book that can be written about that, but it is definitely controversial. Unver, how are you? Welcome. Yeah, I don't know so much about the uh, the ferret, but Samra is a veterinarian, so she would know better than I would. And yeah, that's awesome. That uh, so I can imagine that Samra is definitely an animal person, being a veterinarian. And Samra just Samra just moved. I, I want to share these tomorrow on the live stream, but I think I did ask Samra if it was okay. I think it, this. Let me get rid of this. Um, can I get rid of that? Yeah. Um, this is from Samra. She sent uh, a message. Uh, she's a channel member on the other channel. And she sent a, a message to us on the discord server that she recently moved. She was enjoying a cup of coffee at her new place, I believe. So yeah, Samra's a veterinarian. Good person to know if you have a uh, problem with one of your animals. All right, and I will, I will mention that again tomorrow during the uh, the other live stream. And if you want to find the, the live stream for tomorrow, there is a link right in the description box on YouTube. Also, if you're just joining us or you're watching on replay, you're coming in late, um, on YouTube, the description box, it has the list of words, it has the article, and it also has the quiz if you want to take the quiz after this lesson. Look at that. Diego, my friend, how are you? Yes, thank you. Hey, and Diego, you are also a channel member. You actually helped pay for this. So thank you so much. Uh, Central America, welcome. Yeah, the Facebook page, um, I think has like 100 new um, members this week. It, it was crazy. And people from all over Myanmar, Syria, uh, just some awesome places, Somalia, Honduras, uh, so many, so many awesome people to meet over on the Facebook page. So if you're watching on Facebook, hello. Oh yeah. So this channel, um, Samra, great question. I'm sorry, Zobeda, great question. Yeah. This channel is going to be a little different because I will experiment more on this channel like, I don't know if this lesson would do as well on the other channel. So I'll put it here. And if people like it, they can stop by. And if they don't like it, they can, you know, say, see ya. So let's get back to the article here. What the heck's a clone and how are they made? Do we already read this? Clones are two living things that have the exact same genes, just like identical twins. I do remember reading that. Clones of animals are, I think I remember reading that too. Let's skip down here. Um, one thing I do want to mention, if you are reading something that's a little bit difficult in English, or I guess even in your own language, but what I tell my students is to look at the pictures, read the captions. The captions are what is written 
under the picture. And they can often be very helpful for understanding what the article is about, especially if you were reading something that's really hard, like something scientific. Whoa, look at this. Whoops. Ready for the quiz. If you want, if you don't feel like reading the, the article anymore, that quiz is available in the description box. And when you finish taking it, you will get your score immediately. So this is Dolly. I, I am old enough to remember this. Dolly was the first animal to be cloned back in 1996. And I believe it's Scott. Yeah. In 1996, Dolly, the sheep was the first animal to be cloned by a group of researchers in Scotland. These cells are then placed in the womb of an adult female of that animal called a surrogate mom to grow the new clone. This is um, something we got into in my class this week. One of my students brought it up. One of my students mentioned it, brought it up. That's a phrasal verb you can use instead of mention. So one of my students brought it up and he said, what if... I think he had read this somewhere. What if a woolly mammoth was able to be cloned? And in English, a woolly mammoth is like this big elephant kind of thing that lived tens of thousands of years ago. Samra might know more about the woolly mammoth than I do. But he said that scientists think you could find an elephant. He said an Asian elephant, I think. A species of elephant and get some DNA from the woolly mammoth. It might be too old, but according to my student, he thought it could be done and then clone a woolly mammoth. So you could have like woolly mammoths running around and that's what's being done with these endangered species like ferrets. And that is what, if you've ever seen the movie Jurassic park, you know, that's a similar. Oh no. Eduardo. Is it uh is it getting blurry? Oh, sorry. Oh, glad to see that. Chat. Sorry, the chat's moving. Is it is it blurry for anybody else? I hope not. No. I hope that's I hope that's uh answering that question there. No. Unver, how are you? Welcome. This article is almost done, actually. Let's pop it up right here. And if you are, if you are reading this on your own and you see these blue links, this will take you to other articles on this website. Yeah, it's great. I've read a few of these articles to my students. The surrogate mom then gives birth to the clone. Elizabeth Ann's surrogate mom is a ferret of a different species. Cloning is controversial, however, as some say that cloning animals may lead scientists to one day clone humans, which could lead to a lot of different problems. For example, one issue some scientists argue is that the science isn't perfect and errors in the cloning process could lead to babies with major medical issues or deformities. Why this ferret was cloned. Back in 1981, the black-footed ferret species was on the edge of of extinction, the edge of extinction. So last week, I think it was last week, if you were in the Poland uh, live stream, we did a, an article with some vocabulary words on the other channel. You could probably find it by searching American English with this guy, Poland. We talked about the difference in English between extinct and endangered. So if you remember that from last week, endangered means their numbers are dwindling. So those animals, they're becoming fewer and fewer. Extinct means they're gone. They're not coming back, unfortunately. So this black-footed ferret apparently is endangered. So through the cloning process, they're trying to bring this animal back. Science. Yeah, 
I'm sorry about that. Can't read it. Hmm. Well, I'll try to make it bigger. Um, right here. Boom. Um, but the good news is there is a link in the description box of this live stream on YouTube that you should be able to, to see, and it won't be blurry. Uh, Samra is saying, how cute are the babies? I don't, you know, actually when my students and I read this, I said, those are ugly. The little pink, but hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right here, right here. Let's get down. For, uh, uh, now that's cute. But I'm sorry, Samra. I just, I just thought those little pink guys were just a little bit ugly. I'm sorry. Uh, but let's read the caption here. Elizabeth Ann drinks milk from her surrogate mother beside her siblings. Is that a new word for anybody? Siblings? It's a good one to know. Siblings? I'll wait. Oh. And it usually takes me about 10 minutes. But if anybody knows siblings, it's a great term to use because it just can shorten your English a little bit. I don't want to say it myself. Oh, look at that, Eduardo. Yeah, so instead of saying brothers and sisters, or if you don't know the gender, you can say siblings. Do you have any siblings? And if you don't remember the word sibling, you can say, hey, do you have any brothers or sisters? But if you want to bring your English up a little bit, you might say, hey, do you have any siblings? And then you can say, yeah, I have a brother and I have a sister. That's, that's true for me. Ivana, nicely done. Hey, um, Ivana is a teacher in Poland. I hope she had a good week. I hope the students didn't give her too much trouble. Yeah, I'm sorry, Samra. I just, um, I don't think they are as cute as what they'll become. I think Sam loves all animals, which is awesome. To help the species survive, scientists in Wyoming gathered seven ferrets from the few that remained to start a breeding program. Breeding program, that means getting little babies. And we often have, in the United States, maybe in your country too, dog breeders. So part of their job. It's mostly a part-time job, but they will breed dogs. So usually from the same breed. So breed can be a noun or breed can be a verb. So my brother has a dog. It's a Labrador retriever. We call lab for short. And they got their dog from a breeder. So the dog's breed is Labrador retriever, but my brother bought his dog from a breeder breeder. So breeder can be a noun too. It's in a person who breeds. All right. And when, when I'm teaching on zoom, sometimes to share the screen. Yeah. Svetka. Yeah. Breeding horses as well. How long have you been studying English? I wonder probably quite a while. Nicely done. Back to the article. If I can pull it up. Boom. I can't pull it up. Since then, thousands of ferrets have been reintroduced into the wild, but they all come from the seven original ferrets because the ferrets all come from such a small gene pool. They are missing something called genetic diversity. And yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to get too controversial here, but we're not talking about diversity like we normally do with humans, you know, different races and different religions. We're talking about different genes. So with the virus, the recent virus, because it was new to humans, our species lacked the diversity to stop the virus from spreading like wildfire. 
that's some kind of advanced English right there, but it's hard to talk about science without getting too advanced. So now that people are getting vaccinated and people are getting sick with the virus and hopefully surviving, now our species, certain parts of our species has antibodies. We call it antibodies in English. antibodies. So that's what happens when you get a vaccine or that's what happens when you get sick and recover. Your body will have antibodies, which will help you fight off that illness in the future. But unfortunately, when this new virus was introduced to our species, none of us had the antibodies. So that's why so many people got sick and the hospital started filling up. So that's the problem that this article is saying about ferrets is that because they all have the same genes, if some sort of virus, a ferret virus was introduced to that species, it's unlikely they would be diverse enough that some of them would survive. They might all pass away if it was the right virus. Oh. Ivana, congratulations. I am the same. I was vaccinated on the 7th of April, April 7th. And I go back, I'm sorry, March, March 7th. And I go back on April 7th. So, and I got the, the Pfizer one, the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah. The poor ferrets, huh? I mean, they're cute. I do think they're cute when they get a little older, a couple weeks old. So, that's that's the problem with creating cloned versions of these animals that are endangered is they don't have that genetic diversity. Okay. It's pretty advanced English. And I, I, I was afraid of that just because it's, it is an article that deals with science. But you probably noticed this already. If you are an Italian speaker, Portuguese speaker, the more scientific you get with English, the more it's going to sound like your own language. Because in English, we get so many of our scientific words from Latin. So Spanish would be the same, French, Romanian a little bit. Not sure if anybody's in here from Romania. All right, I think we're almost done with this article. Almost done. That? Yeah, I think there's a little paragraph right here. Genetic diversity is important for helping animals fight off disease and other dangers that could harm their species. Like, come on, come on. Who, 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 who in the chat thinks that little one is ugly? Come on, come on. Elizabeth Ann was cloned using the cells from a ferret that lived more than 30 years ago. Oh, adorable. Yeah. For that, Samra, I totally agree. Think of it this way. Say you're on a team of seven people trying to take down a dragon. You each bring unique combat skills, but the dragon breathes fire and none of you know how to overcome the flames. But if you brought in an eighth person, there's a chance they fought fire breathing dragons before and their knowledge could mean the difference between life and death. Elizabeth Ann could be this eighth person. Her genes come from a ferret named Willa who died in the 1980s and whose cells were frozen in case they might come in handy in the future. Elizabeth Ann brings a new gene pool into the mix and lead researcher Ben Novak says that once she and her kids are introduced into the wild, they'll increase the genetic diversity of the species and make the species better at surviving dangers in the world. And that looks like that's Ben right there. Lead researcher Ben Novak holds Elizabeth Ann just after she was born in 2020. The end. The end. I want to try something here. I think this will work. We've done this one other time. Yeah. Whoa. 
Did you guys hear that loud music? That didn't happen before. I think there were some people. We uh, we played a game. If I can shut that music off without hurting all of our ears. I just need to find it. If anybody would like to play. Okay. The music's going to start again. Hang on just a second. Oh my goodness. I, I hope you didn't hear that music like I did. Whew. It's pretty loud. Um, if you want, uh, we do have 21 people in this chat. There might be some more on Facebook. Uh oh, Cecilia has a class in five minutes. Okay, good. Nobody, uh, Sam or at least didn't hear the music. Well, Cecilia, you have fun at that class. I hope they learn a lot of English from you. Okay, it's good. I was the only one that heard the loud music. If anybody would like to play this little game called Quizlet Live, if you think you know the words pretty well, or even if you don't and you want to practice, see you, Cecilia, we can play this game here. Oh, I do need to get rid of Samra's comment. Sorry, Samra. Thanks for leaving that comment. I can share this and we can actually play a little game called Quizlet Live. So what you can do is go to this website, just open up another tab in your browser. Um, you can probably, if you're on a Mac, you can hit Command T and punch in this code right here. Or I guess if you're on your phone, you could scan that QR code we call it in English. But if you go to www.quizlet.live and punch in 501-807, we could play a little game. but we need at least two people. So, uh-oh, uh-oh. The reason I'm saying uh-oh is Elena is here. And the last time we played, Elena, if I remember correctly, just smoked the first game, <laughs> just absolutely crushed it. Uh-oh, maybe people are afraid. I don't want to play against Elena. Yeah, I think for the Poland one, she did she did crush some people, but it might take some people a few minutes to uh, to get over there. Uh oh, we have another we have another challenger for Elena. Okay, I will um, I'll just give this a, a second so people can find it. I know it takes a little while to to find the website and then punch in that code, and I don't want to start the game until everybody is in. But if we do play one game and you want to get in for the second game, uh, we can do that as well. So. And while people are getting into that game, let me make that a little bigger so you can see. Um, just a reminder, in the description box, there is a link to the article. There's a link to the vocabulary words. And there's a link to the quiz that you can take after if you would like, totally free. I did this with my students earlier in the week and I thought, you know what? There might be some people around the world wanting to learn English a little better. Why not share this with them? All right, that might be it, that might be it. There's also a link to tomorrow's live stream on my other channel called American English with this guy. And basically for about an hour, I will take questions about American culture and learning English. All right. What do you say? Let's play the, oh, oh another person came in. Uh oh, Sam in there. I've been working on my Turkish. Mahatba. That's it. That's all I know. It's probably not that great. Mahatba. Ah, Eduardo. Yeah. That's the problem. If, uh, there's only so many thumbs, so many screens on a phone. I do like the phone though. Oh, thank you so much. Svetki. Is that, is that my saying that right? I hope. I wonder if you're also from Turkey. Mahatba. 
That's the best I can do. I'm sorry. Mahapa. I'm trying to say hi in Turkish. All right, Luke's got to go. See you, Luke. Is it uh, Samra? Is it? I'm trying. I'm going to try. All right, what do you say? Let's play a game here. Oh, Ivan is in there too. Oh, and Aroni. All right. Here we go. So what's going on now is that if you're playing the game, you know what's going on. But if you're not playing the game, what is happening is nothing because I need to start the game. What is happening now is that people who are playing the game are being asked a question. They're giving a definition and then they have to figure out which one works best. And we won't know exactly who is who until the end and their name will flash up. But as you can see, the penguins are dominating right now. The penguins are dominating. But the problem is if you get one wrong, you have to start all the way back at the beginning. Mm -mm. Penguins. Oh, penguins. They were stumped. Now we got sea turtles. No pressure. No pressure. Just if you get one wrong, you have to start all over. No pressure, sea turtles. You got this. Oh, I think one more. Oh, Svatka. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Nicely done. Winner. Winner. We can play again too. Winner. Koalas looks like they were second and wolves. Nice. But the winner, the winner is koalas, right? Koalas were also second and wolves. Right. Let's see here. I think if anybody wants to, no, oh, maybe I can't get anybody in. Oh yeah. If anybody wants to get in, I can wait just a second. There was a chance. Maybe play this once or twice. Svetka. Nice job. All right. What do you say? A couple more times? Here you go. Uh oh. Maybe they maybe they wanted to leave. Maybe they had to go. All right, here we go. We got Siberian tigers, alligators, chameleons, mustangs. That's a type of horse. Giraffes, wolves, and lynx. Lynx. Aroni, you did not win, did you? You didn't win. Oh, that sounds good. Mahatbaha. I got to get the Mahatbaha. Oh, Mustangs, no pressure. It's just if you get one wrong, you have to go back to the beginning. Ooh, Elena would not be denied a second time. Chameleons and Lynx, nice try. Nice try. All right, I hope you have all enjoyed this live stream. We went over about an hour. I hope your English is a little bit better than it was before you started this live stream. Don't forget to uh, check that description box, link to the article if you want to reread it, link to the, the words themselves if you want to study them, and a link to the quiz. If you take the quiz, you will get your results right after that. You can take it as many times as you like. All right, let's end it here. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow on tomorrow's live stream. All right, have a good night.